Welcome back, viewers, uh, for our second round of panel discussion on day two. The topic for the panel discussion would be artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud, and more, a reality check. So today, technologies like artificial intelligence, cloud, blockchain, and many others are often turned as dis disruptive, but, being dis but despite being in the business for long, they are circled with some speculative challenges. So are they worth the hype or the re reality is different? Is this the time for a reality check? Let our panelists tell us this. So for today's panel discussion, we will have Mr. Balaji TK, Chief Information Officer, Orange Retail Finance Limited, who will be moderating the session. Mr. Prabir Mishra. Thank you. Thank you, Aman. Chief Executive Officer, Trust One. Mr. Kizar Momin. Chief Technology Officer, Indian School Finance Company. Mr. Rishabh Garg, Chief Technology Officer, Ugro Capital. Mr. Harshwardhan Mittal, Chief Technology Officer, Cred Avenue. And Mr. Rajendra Bish, Vice President, Technology and Digital, Bajaj Auto Finance Limited. Now over to Mr. Balaji TK uh, for moderating the session. Thank you very much, Shaman. Thank you. I take this opportunity to thank the Elites team for this wonderful and exciting Game Changers Summit. I welcome my eminent panelist who has a wide range of tech expertise and demonstrated their emerging skills in the present joint. A little bit brief about myself and my company. Myself, Balaji, having 23 years of tech expertise in various domains, and I'm leading the digital initiative for Orange Digital Finance. We are an NBFC started six years back and go based on traditional digital approach. Uh, the very, very interesting topic we are having today. Uh, like, let me move my first point of discussion. Very, very relevant right now, which is the latest buzzword is a blockchain. Uh, I want to understand from a eminent panel, like blockchain is one of the trending emerging technology that can be combined to create a leapfrog business value. I want the comment and view. So I will go to Mr. Pra Prabir Mishra, Chief Executive Officer, TRST01. Please go ahead, Mr. Pra Mishra. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Malaji, <clears throat> for giving us the opportunity to elaborate on a blockchain. So yes, we started pretty uh, late in the blockchain, yes, the knowledge of the blockchain, what we gained from 2016, but 2019, 20, what we started. But by the time right now we are seeing, yes, there is a huge opportunity on the blockchain. Blockchain as a game changer is going to be the future. Uh, why I say game changer? Blockchain is a, a technology adoption, one version of truth, which has got prevalence everywhere. That's why I say there is a huge, huge requirement of this technology adoption, and there is a going to be a sea change. You are going to find it in next couple of years. Uh, yeah, coming to the basic question of whether it's a reality. Yes, this is the reality which is going to come. This is going to come, and how the people are. The, the, the one thing I want to say: the technology is emerging pretty fast. The technology is changing its shape. Previously just talk of around uh, around six months or one year before before blockchain as a technology when people used to say people used to interpret as a cryptocurrency but blockchain is something one aspect of blockchain is crypto not not that crypto is blockchain so 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 that's that's the kind of a thing people should see right now we are looking for a there is a early adoption in the government sector particularly public sector talk about the state government uh, entities talk about the central government entity there is a early adoption. And in fact, government of India, they've created a lot of uh, center of excellence for blockchain translation. There's an intention from CBDT to GST to talk about any of the government uh, uh, entities to accept this blockchain as a technology and uh, work towards the single version of truth. Yes, there is going to be a sea change. And uh, I think uh, out of... Uh, as an estimate, we have got around more than 527 or 550 blockchain companies across India working on various use cases, starting from the seed traceability to talk about the food and agri, to talk about the uh, BFSI segment, banking and financial industry. A couple of the banks have already been adopted. 
yes we have started couple of use cases in banking only one thing i want to highlight out here any technology adoption is going to be pretty fast if we make it convenient and uh, uh, we say that technology for all so we call it as a blockchain technology for all and if we can find out see the the higher use cases are on the identifying the smart uh, uh, contract and uh, you have got a self sovereign identity there are huge 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 implication on the higher technology but again on the low end of the technology side the adoption on the talk about the retail banking adoption talk about on the certificates authentication talk about the seat traceability foot traceability these are the earlier adopter on the blockchain and uh, yes we are working for a donation transparency and the product is already live so these are the things which are going to give a flip to the technology and it is going to get into the higher version prediction thank you very much mr pal mishra so uh, from a discussion i can hello from a discussion i can able to see like you've been touch based on one version of truth and there will be sea change in couple of years and there are a lot of early adopters are there and there is a center of excellence also being created by government of india and one of the use cases which you shared about a smart contract very very interesting now i will go to mr kizar momin chief technology officer indian school finance company can you please explain what kind of use cases you are exploring right now in your domain thank you thank you balaji uh, i think blockchain is a very big topic you know in itself uh, there are a lot of speculations and with respect to the maturity of it and how organizations can benefit and you know which organizations can leverage and is it going to be commercial viable or not there are a few things that i want to you know uh, mention here in this forum is uh, we talk about leaf frog in business uh, leaf frog is always about a sizable change it is not something small right we also know that in today's digital world we collect data from millions of customers millions of sources example every customer device is a source of information for us isn't it and this data is often traveling between different organizations different partners different ecosystems so the biggest challenge in such a size and scale of the data is how do you ensure the integrity of the data how do you ensure the reliability of the data how do you make sure the data is secure so i understand what blockchain is offering is it is offering this missing link right where the data can securely and transparently you know travel and also be at a decentralized location so uh, like praveer already mentioned it is helping the institutions create a single source of truth and that single source of truth can help in making informed business decisions which is the very key so so the use cases i mean there are humongous amount of use cases a lot of it probably already touched upon it so blockchain allows you know different entities maybe be it suppliers be it customers be it uh, partners or be it larger organizations to participate into transaction it gives you both uh, permissionless and with permission you know kind of setups also so relatively closed uh, setups and also complete public setup so interconnecting large ecosystems seamlessly uh, is one of the biggest advantage that blockchain brings on the table and if so we are able to leverage this then it will bring immense value to any business model so example we already know uh, the bitcoin and cryptocurrency how they are leveraging uh, blockchain technology right financial industry there's a huge use case in healthcare insurance iot is another area essentially we're talking about every device that is going to be live on the internet will be connected and also will be you know backed up by artificial intelligence so if you want to collect the data from those much of sources you know and disperse places i think blockchain is the answer uh with respect to the education sector we are we where we are working uh, i must uh, admit and say the research indicates that education sector is moving relatively slow as far as the use uh, of the blockchain is concerned but i think uh, in near future when uh, we come up with the businesses business cases particularly the ecosystem comes up with viable business cases i think it's only going to catch up because the technology is really promising what do you balaji you're on mute balaji yeah thank you mr kasir like very very quite interesting you touch based on this how the data are traveling and what kind of integrity we need to implement and how the data need to be transparent quite interesting use cases you are exploring very nice 
Now we'll go to Mr. Rishabh Gurg, Chief Technology Officer, Yogura Capital. Over to you, please. You are on mute, please. Hi, Varish. So, uh, if I talk about the blockchain, so there are mixed views on the blockchain technology uh, right now, within in the industry. So, few few people think that blockchain is on high, and few people think that blockchain certainly is the way to go forward. So, I think there are clear use cases for blockchain. So, blockchain cannot be just uh, plugged in and into uh, plugged in by any organization. So, blockchain has a clear use case where there are multiple stakeholders and there is a trust deficit. And as uh, Mr. Uh, Mumin has mentioned, that uh, where, where data flows to multiple stakeholders through heterogeneous systems. Uh, so there are certainly delays in the workflow. So blockchain implementation tend to eliminate these delays and improve efficiencies in the workflows. So the clear use case right now we can see is, uh, is uh, where uh, blockchain certainly making the impact is in cross-border payments and trade finance, basically. So adoption, I think, is slow. So, uh, so since it requires multiple stakeholders to collaborate and uh, adopt a single platform, so bringing all the stakeholders on a single ecosystem is difficult to achieve right now. So, in my previous stint as a uh, as a CTO with a rural insurtech uh, uh, company, I had uh, architected and implemented a real life use case of blockchain uh, for automated claim settlements in crop insurance based on the weather parameters, basically. So I'll give you just an example of uh, what we have achieved over that. The complete project was backed by World Bank, basically. So there are multiple stakeholders in crop insurance settlement. So one stakeholder is weather uh, weather company who provides the weather data of a particular location. Another com another stakeholder is insurance company. Based on the weather data, they analyze if the rainfall is above that particular threshold. The claim is due uh, to the farmers, basically. And another stakeholder is, far, is farmers, and another one is insurance uh, insurance broking company and government and regulator. So these are the many stakeholders in the complete process value chain. So claim process prior to implementation of blockchain is a long process. So the claim process used to take months, basically the settlement process. So insurance company used to uh, demand uh, complete weather data from the weather insurance weather weather company, and they used to analyze the weather data. Then uh, they decide who for, for which partner. The claims are due, and they make the payments according to the according to the farmers. And there's a lack of complete transparency in the whole process, and there's a trust deficit. Farmers do not trust the uh, insurance companies. Insurance companies do not trust weather companies whether they are providing accurate data or not, uh, if they are uh, fudging in what the data or not. And it is, even government is not getting the clear view how the claims are being settled. So what we have done is so we uh, brought all these stakeholders on a single blockchain platform. And weather data through IoT sensors was, uh, was continuously being fed into uh, uh, that platform. And uh, farmers can see real time update of the weather data on their mobile phones through SMSs, basically. And whenever the weather data hits a particular threshold, so there are smart contracts built into the blockchain. So the smart contracts based, based on certain rules defined by the insurance companies uh, in the insurance proposal to the farmers. These smart contracts automatically executes and inform the farmers immediately that there is a pay claim payable uh, for their crops. So this certainly reduces the time lag uh, from uh, for, for the claim uh, to be made payable to the farmers and improve the efficiency of the whole process, increase the transparency. So, so blockchain. Uh, so idea of putting through this example. So, so it's certainly revolutionary technology. It can improve uh, the processes, existing processes, uh, by many folds. But it cannot be used by uh, organization as a standalone technology for its own consumption. So there has to be an ecosystem to consume the technology and to really uh, reap the benefits out of this technology. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Thank you. It was quite interesting. You touched upon how to bring the efficiency in the workflow and how the automated claims are getting settled and how you used smart contract with the weather data. Quite interesting use cases you have deployed. Very nice. I think users can able to take the note of it and try it in that respective domain. Now I move to Mr. Arshavardhan Mittal, Chief Technology Officer, Cred Avenue. Over to you, Mr. Arshavardhan. Thanks, Balaji. 
I think um, quite a bit of uh, interesting uh, information is already shared in, on this topic. Uh, I'll add the context from the revenue perspective. Uh, we are a institutional debt marketplace, so we help uh, uh, institutional borrowers to connect with the right lenders uh, on multiple financial products. So say for example, uh, I'll talk about um, securitization, right? So in securitization, we are helping um, NBFCs to sell their you know, loan book to larger banks, right? Uh, they are, uh, now securitization, uh, not everything is centralized, right? So there's a quite a bit of uh, mistrust. Sometimes if someone wants to commit fraud, right, they can basically securitize the same loan uh, with multiple lenders. Uh, which is not possible in centralized places. Like, for example, we also do bond trading, but all the bonds need to be um, listed like um, with the depositories, NSDL, CSDL. So it's not possible to sell the same bond again, right? So, but uh, securitization, because there is no centralized um, system, right? So their systems like blockchain has large potential, but the challenge today is that option. Right. So when we are looking at use cases which are industry wide, you know, unless the large part of the industry starts adopting these technologies, right? So we can't really see the full benefit of it. So that's the reason that you know we are investing and experimenting with these technologies as of now, but uh, they are not seeing the prime time as of today. But um, the the kind of pain they are solving is pretty big. So uh, definitely, we see that sometime down the line, you know, it should become mainstream, and uh, we should reap the benefit from the decentralized, you know, um, register of the block blockchain. Uh, quite interesting, Ash. Quite interesting. You touched on how we were exploring the use cases, the securitization of the platform and drone trading. Very quite interesting. So now let me move to a very wider topic. Uh, I want to understand from you, like, are these technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud, machine language, robotic plus automations, all these are, are real heroes or, or it's a, just a kind of mere jargon we are trying to experiment? Uh, I will first move to Mr. Prabir Mishra. Over to you, Mr. Prabir. It's not a jargon, I would say. Yeah, people perceive that, okay, you are using heavy jargons on the technology front. But see, now the new age technology, what I call it as a industry 4.0, or some people have started calling it industry 5.0. See, what the technology, technology is not that of uh, when we used to talk of SAP ERP implementation of years together. Right now, the technology adoption and the, the easy and convenient way of integrating with the technology on a SaaS model or a uh, software as a service we don't have to install a heavy machinery everything is on a cloud that is make the everything a reality happening and the 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 and the and the underlying factor is that yes you have got a throughout the country you have got a throughout the world i would say you have got a better bandwidth internet connectivity so technology adoption is what it makes to uh, 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 make it happens in a in, in a really first transformation of all these things so it's not all the jargons. Yes, still, as 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 the eminent panelist said, it's blockchain is not a blockchain or any kind of emerging technology. It's not a kind of a push. You push it everywhere. You can push it for a astrology for a blockchain. Yeah, what is going to do a astronomy and a blockchain? Sorry, astrology and a blockchain. So yes, it has got a, some selective use, but it has got a wider use, and it is going to make your life pretty easy. See the think of a smart contract. Previously, my my friend uh, uh, he said about the smart contract. Her said about the smart contract. The moment it get into a smart contract, the moment it get into a, a simplifying the a settlement process, be it a insurance. Right now, if you take on an average, it's three months to six months is the waiting period in the hospital for the insurance claim settlement. Why it is happening? Because you are not trusting each other. Insurance company is not trusting on the for your vehicle also it's taking a lot of time so so the trust factor is missing and what is the new technology is giving you the confluence or the convergence of all these technologies is giving you that belief and the trust and the easy to operate so that's how i say that 
the future is going to be the convergence of all these things it's not a myth it's, it's a reality it's not a mere of jargons yes the things are evolving everything evolves everything evolves and that's how the transformation happens even on the blockchain or ai or ml things are evolving and good things are coming previously we used to talk about the decentralized okay blockchain is a decentralized under that decentralized things everything is visible then what quorum is right now doing it's providing a centralized option under a decentralized so it is providing a private a uh, uh, option under a public domain so you are doing your secure banking transaction without publishing it what you are doing what the value of the transaction so that's the kind of a new things are emerging so so that's how the things are going to be what i believe yes it's not a mere of a jargon it's a, it's a, the reality is going to capture maybe pretty soon maybe with the new normal coming in maybe within next 2 to 3 years you think that everything is on a real sense we are talking thank you valaji thank you thank you very much prabir like uh, you talked about the saas which is helping the tech adoption and and uh, like making the life easier and more over this converging very quite interesting from a view point now i will move to mr kizar momin uh, to take his view on all this technology adoptions thank you valaji once again uh, i think uh, uh, the our panelist has already mentioned is no more jargon so uh, in my opinion i think the artificial intelligence blockchain uh, cloud and every other technology that we talk about uh, these are the key drivers for digital right uh, we also understand that each of these technologies are at a varying degree of maturity with respect to you know the underlying technology it uses and the way it works also leveraging these uh, technologies and putting it to the business use depends on the maturity of the organizations as well so it's a mix of what level of maturity the technology is and what level of maturity the organizations are in uh in reality example artificial intelligence intelligence we know that is evolving faster than any of us has expected right and it is being actively used in many industries example in manufacturing it's heavily used robotics the entire you know uh, your assembly lines are automated right finance and others are using ai for enormous amount of purposes right uh retail media everybody is using cloud uh, the second technology that we are talking about it has reached a fair level of maturity right and in fact in many organizations uh, they have created their strategy saying that cloud first anything that way they want to implement in the organization they want to go on the cloud first right because it offers a variety of services starting from plain simple storage and compute all the way up to analytics developer tools bit security now it's getting clubbed with the cloud offerings so a lot has been there on the cloud right again the flexibility of regulation economies of scale example the most important aspect is why organizations are using cloud is uh, the reason is you know uh, because it it helps you you know uh, build commercially viable models when you go to cloud blockchain we already know that it is being heavily used in bitcoins and uh, uh, cryptocurrency so yes so ai cloud blockchain they are definitely promising technologies uh, they are at a fair level of maturity when it put to proper use and they have the these technologies have the ability to create differentiations for the businesses provided the businesses know how to put these real heroes at the task so i think it's abc of digital you can say uh, artificial intelligence blockchain and cloud of digital and without this abc i don't think uh, any organization can succeed yeah. quite quite interesting is are quite interesting you touched on a very very relevant one which says it's it's like maturity of the organization and, and it makes a difference how we want to use the technology to make the difference for business that's a very very valid point uh, so now i will take a different topic and and would like to discuss on this uh, how important is the deployment of this disruptive technologies like ai ml blockchain rpa cloud etc are creating the business values and business models for the organization what do you mr rishab yep thank you for uh, so for me disruptive technologies like blockchain and cloud just they are creating new use cases as so mr mumin has mentioned and thus new business models 
So a lot of startups focused on AI, chatbots, cloud-based solutions emerged out of uh, these technologies. And emergence of new data sources, because as more and more data is getting democratized, is further fueling to the growth of new business models. So for example, just take an example of cloud. So cloud had enabled the emergence of new startups and business models. They had made access to infrastructure cheaper and cost actually grows as you scale. They had eliminated all the upfront cost which is required to start the business and improve the business con continuity as what we had seen in the COVID era. So uh, the people who are hosted on clouds, they have not seen any disruption in the business continuity uh, because of the lockdowns. A similar, uh, in a similar way, AI has automated the complete process and helped in providing better customer experience through personalized services without the involvement of humans. So these technologies are certainly uh, helping uh, us creating new business models and helping new startups uh, coming across the board. And uh, we and we are seeing new and new innovative solutions because of these technologies. And they are enabling the existing business to perform at the maximum capacity. Thank you, Rishabh. Thank you on, on touching on this data democratization and how AI is helping like a better customer experience. Uh, very interesting how we are putting a new business model into play. Uh, now I'll move to Mr. Ashavardhan. I would like to understand your viewpoint, how these disruptive technologies are, are adding value to create a new business model from your perspective. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Balaji. I think uh, we utilize, um, so we are actually a cloud first um, or cloud only technology company, right? So we don't have any, for example, we have zero on-premise presence. So I can tell you like, you no know, one of the three technologies we talked about, right? Um, our whole business model will be very different, right? So if we start doing the on-prem work, being a marketplace, which is connecting the, uh, you know, borrowers and the lenders, Right. So we connect so many different uh, organizations and uh, with the help of cloud, we are able to um, basically scale uh, seamlessly. Recently, I can also give an example of, you know, so we utilize um, AI also significant. Um, we have a huge investment in the machine learning and um, data engineering for various purposes. Like for example, we do quite a bit of fraud detection whenever customers are uploading the data about their own loan applications, right? We need to ensure that, you know, whatever they are presenting to the investors, that's not fraudulent, right? So that's where we utilize ML quite a bit. Same way, like when we are trying to match make uh, the um, borrower to the investors. So quite a bit of recommendation is again driven to the machine learning algorithms and with the, all the past uh, transaction data we have both in public domain as well as whatever we have collected over the last few years. And uh, many times we are combining, you know, the use of say both cloud and um, um, AI ML, right? So the reason we were able to move fast on this is that now there are a lot of ML tools and uh, with the, which you can quick start very fast. So the point I'm trying to make is that some of these technologies are already very relevant and they are, uh, you know, essential to many businesses. Many businesses may not be even uh, relevant without them. And it's not that they only work in isolation. Many times we are utilizing multiple of these and a combination of these to solve very interesting problems which cannot be solved at a scale, you know, without this. Quite interesting, Ashok. Quite interesting, like how you are putting the symbol for uh, fraud detection and how your recommendation you are getting fine tuned with this MIL and, and AA. Very quite interesting. Uh, from a perspective, from my business, uh, like we also adapted the cloud journey. After the cloud journey, we went to a blockchain. In the blockchain, we are also, what we are trying to do is we have done like whatever the documents were given to the customer, we put it in a public 
blockchain where customer can able to refer them. So this kind of use cases we explored it. And in terms of ML, more and more we are bringing uh, various API use cases and building it so that the fraud or the decision making faster can able to happen. I, th I think more or less everybody is into the same, similar kind of a domain and we are exploring it. Uh, I will move to another very, very interesting, relevant topic uh, on an AI. I want to understand is artificial intelligence is helping you to connect within your ecosystem like a client or customer or still you want a kind of a physical approach is preferred. And another point is I want to understand how accurate AI is responding to your customer needs. Uh, I will go to Mr. Prabir Mishra on this. Uh, my expertise is more into the blockchain. I will move past this question. Mm, yeah, uh, uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll pass this question. Yeah. Hey, Kishan, moment. You want to take it up? This? Yes, yes. How does sure. it yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Balaji. So, uh, when you talk about um, AI, obviously, so AI facilitates definitely a better understanding of the customer and how it is done because we are gathering a lot of data and analyzing the data of the customer, be it uh, social profiling of the customer, uh, historical information, financials, and we are able to arrive at the behavior of the customer, right? Uh, second aspect is AI also has ability to learn and improve on its own. That is called a self-learning and self improvement based on the data that is being churned and analyzed, right? So what AI is doing is it will uh, it is enabling you know, organizations to gain a much more accurate understanding of the customers, right? Which will in turn help you in decision making, profiling of your customers, recalibrating uh, what offers you can give to the customers, what are the propositions, right proposition for the customers, and also you can risk profile your customers, saying that work good, bad, and not uh, to be catered to, right? Uh, in terms of uh, uh, maturity of the AI and coming up to speed and reliability, uh, uh, the research shows that AI has come up to the speed to a reasonable uh, uh, level of accuracy now. For example, when it comes to hyper-personalization or some structured customer interactions through chatbots, etc. So AI is doing a fabulous job and there's a very limited scope of errors there. Uh, AI is also helping companies to provide, uh, example, highly relevant content, right? Example, sales, whenever there is an implementation of AI, the sales opportunities are going humongous. Uh, and it is also improve, uh, helping to improve the customer journeys, right? Uh, some of the companies, example, are using AI uh, for in real time interaction. Example, if you're buying a product on a website, right? AI based on the clicks and the hotspots that are uh, where you're going on the website or the places, AI auto triggers and makes a phone call to a customer or shows a pop-up screen saying that this is the better option for you. I'll go for this. So these active interactions are there, right? So AI is helping, you know, in buying journeys, influencing customer and buying behavior and a lot more, right? Okay. So in, uh, I think AI has covered a significant, significant ground when it comes to reliability of the technology, all right, and uh, it's uh, used in the real sense uh, to leverage the business cases. Uh, the next level, I think uh, what is interesting to know is uh, finance industry are exploring the use of, not exploring, I must say, uh, the journeys are already embarked upon and some of are really leveraging it big time, particularly for key decisions making like credit underwriting, right? in collections example for efficiencies and early warning signals fraud detection so yes uh, uh, ai is helping us connect with the customers fast it is also helping us in making a good amount of decisions and obtaining insights uh, it is also helping the customers in, uh, uh, in auto responses and a lot of other areas if you look at sales and uh, customer service and marketing teams across the organizations these days they only talk about leveraging AI, right? And making the hum interactions humanless. Example, some of the colleagues that I was talking about, they are working on very aspirational projects where they are saying they want to, today, if they are running a 600 people call center, they want to completely make it humanless, right? And yet cater to the customer without problem. Imagine the level, size and scale of use of AI that we're talking about. So uh, in my opinion, there will be very few exceptions uh, that will remain in the industry when we put these technologies to use. And uh, going forward, I don't think in near future, there will be any place for 
paper based or uh, manual or human interactions when it comes to customer buying and onboarding and a lot more. Yeah, over to you. Uh, thank you, Kishan. Like you mentioned, a very quite interesting one, which is a social profiling and behavior and kind of a self learning how this AI is doing it, how it is helping like for a credit underwriting, early warnings and hyper profiling. Very, very interesting use cases where it's, it's a kind of a matured model right now where most of these finance domains are following it. Uh, I would like to take opinion from Rishabh uh, on this, how is AI is helping them? Yeah, so I follow the, uh, I support the uh, opinion uh, posed by Mr. Mumin on the AI basically. So certainly AI is helping us in decision making and uh, improve our improving our customer experience. So currently, if we talk about the bank statements and GSTN data can be analyzed by our AI programs uh, uh, quickly and enabled us in making quick decisioning on loans. Without even knowing the end customers, just by analyzing the data, we can get to know the credit worthiness of the person. So this was never happened before. So it used to take us many days before we decide that uh, shifting, uh, analyzing all the data manually before we decide the person is paid when they own. Now it's happening in just under a few minutes. Automated programs uh, continue uh, filtering out data of existing customers and raise early warning signals. Uh, in case the person is going to default, the system raises an early warning signal that the person is going to make default and we should take corrective actions now just to avoid the default. And this helped us uh, during the COVID period uh, a lot. And because of the existence of the data, large amount of data and, uh, and all these AI programs, Organizations are exploring now newer segments, which were not possible before. Uh, so businesses, more business models are becoming more and more inclusive because they are able to analyze more data quickly about a particular business. And they are able to uh, provide credit, extend credit to the segment which was never explored, explored before, like micro enterprises. So apart from this, AI-based tools also help us in cross-selling and upselling new opportunities to the customers. It, it, if I talk about AI-based chatbots, it helps out, helps us, it's, it's helping us in filtering the customers as per their requirement and cutting uh, down the time spent by, uh, by the customer support engineer for first level analysis, basically. So it's all automatically redirect uh, the customers based on his initial queries to relevant customer support executives instead of uh, customer support executive spending his time in just figuring out uh, about the basic queries of the customer. Now it's being done automatically. Yeah. So therefore, I see AI uh, is certainly going to make a huge impact in future and increase further efficiencies of the organizations and they can do much better than now. Uh, thank you, Rishab. Uh, so from your discussion, I can take a few points like you are extensively using AI for the credit analyzing credit worthiness of the customers and which used to take a longer period which you can able to do it in few seconds. Uh, then you are using it for cross-selling, very interesting and relevant. And one more point uh, which I can able to take it is like how we are giving a unified experience using this AI. Uh, now I move to Mr. Arsha Vardhan and I want to understand from your perspective how you are putting AI into use. You are on mute, please. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so I think uh, as I was uh, explaining before, um, there are very, very um, many places we are using AI, um, especially, specifically where there's already a large volume of data for us to utilize, right? So uh, one point I want to add is that it's not always AI replacing humans, right? So it's uh, also working like, you know, helping, you know, some of the manual processes and making them more efficient. And sometimes even to for AI programs to become more efficient, right? So you need to have the continuous feedback coming from the team as well as the customers. Right, so that um, the accuracy of the you know these let's talk about some of the recommendations which we do on the platform, and we measure very carefully the effectiveness of these recommendations. Right, so what we also do is sometimes we 
also ask investors what kind of um, investments they want to do and we have their preferences captured and then same preferences we also do based on the past transactions and you know related customer and so on so uh, sometimes we are finding there's a like you know disconnect between what customer is saying their preferences and what uh, algorithm is telling you know uh, what they have done or what they would like to do right and then when we are doing the root cause analysis it's coming out that sometimes customer is also not able to very crisply art- articulate you know what they really do right and uh, once we are presenting them like you know okay these are the like you know uh, what what we have figured out based on the you know uh, past uh, um, based on our uh, ml algorithm um, so we are able to figure out few new patterns as well right so uh, that that's very interesting um, other places uh, i think um, people have I think we lost this connection. Sorry, uh, yeah. other place where we utilize ML quite a bit is uh, we we are marketplace, so we need to do quite a bit of um, uh, planning in terms of um, uh, forecasting and um, like you know demand and supply uh, forecasting, right? So that's another area we are using. Um, um ai quite a bit also like you know usual places how to look at like you know loss prediction and uh, uh, early warning signal someone talked about so those are the some of the areas where we are utilizing it uh, thank you ash very very interesting like a uh, few points i've been able to make a note of it is so you are using it for a uh, quite extensive for this pattern analysis and one valid point you made is ai is not replacing the human <laughs> Uh, so i believe the workforce going forward for everyone going to be the digital and human so this is a new workforce is every organization going to have it very quite interesting uh, now i'd like to go to a different topic uh, since we are using this huge emerging technology we are deploying and many use cases are being derived certain things are in a very primitive stage certain things are in advanced stage and and everyone is investing huge on this emerging technology i want to understand all this emerging technologies all this new developments which are doing it whether it is safe and cost friendly uh, i would first uh, take the view from mr prabir mishra over to you yeah thank you mr balaji that's the most relevant question nowadays how adaptable or how friendly you are on the technology side when it comes to the money everybody is concerned about that yes now the, the the good thing is that when we talk of the blockchain as a trust o1 we are taking a platform approach so we have got a core platform we have got a multiple blockchain protocols and other end is the client so we connect it over a api so when we take a api approach uh, your um, active pro- programming interface kind of approach the deployment uh, happens pretty fast and the cost burden on the client is pretty low so we take the charge of cloud also if the client is convenient okay we'll take the charge of the cloud we'll take the charge of hosting we give them an option of landing page it can be nova server or can be their server so we are taking a kind of a you say it's it's not a kind of a light capex no capex model it's a kind of a, everything we are taking in front we have got a complete platform deployed we just get into maybe a small time uh, one time cost for the customization and integration portion then we get into a saas model so that's how either you can go for pay as you use or you can go for some monthly retainership model so there are various models which are evolving so on the cost front the things are being happening at a pretty low no capex no heavy on the client side no heavy spending on the client side yes you test it test it as a poc you run the show then you get into the final uh, um, go for the life now similar way see see this is what is happening the time for the implementation is reducing drastically because we have got multiple use cases we have got the platform ready we just do the integration with the api so recently we are doing for a 
a donation platform. In fact, you will be surprised we did it in two weeks time. The project is live. So, so, so this is that uh, uh, what the client or the customers are looking for. How fast you can? Okay, it depends on. It may be two weeks to four weeks or two months, depending on the complexity. But the moment you define the roadmap, how the things are going to be, it's a kind of a hundred percent cloud approach through a platform approach, and you have what a choices of menu, uh, 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 choices of uh, offering, what you can adapt. So that's how the things are. This is the way you have to be getting into. See, for the Microsoft to change from a uh, uh, one-time fee to license model monthly as you use, it took years together. But the whole, 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 whole world economy is getting evolved as, as per that. So you don't own the product. Okay, you lease out the things. So that's what um, I would like to say out here. Thanks to Prabir. Thank you. Uh, like uh, the various cost model we have discussed and uh, platform as a service is available and uh, the AP approach is available and uh, CapEx is getting removed and, and only kind of OPEX model based on paper use model. Very interesting, which helps us to move forward on this technology. Uh, I will now want to take the view from Kizar Momin. What's the view on the safe and cost friendly approach for this emerging technology? Thank you, Balaji. And I uh, totally agree with uh, Prabir you know, on almost every bit that he said. And I think uh, very profound insights he, have given, he has given us on, particularly on the blockchain. Uh, I will uh, cover a bit on the uh, security with respect to cloud and AI. So I think there are a lot of uh, hidden dimensions also when it comes to data and security. So particularly with cloud, uh, security discussions always come up, you know, no matter which cloud provider you're talking about. But I think the good news for NBFCs and banks and regulated institutions is because the regulator and laws has been consistently working in this arena. And I think they're demanding proofs of focus on security, right? So that is something that is a very positive uh, step uh, by the regulators and by the government. So they're keeping the security in check. So I think that ensures that, you know, even if the smaller or bigger players are jumping into adoption of cloud or some of the areas, they have a second eye too, which is continuously watching them and asking them to take a corrective measures. So, and also cloud providers now providing good amount of security services that can be clubbed with your basic models of compute and analytics and uh, et cetera. So, and you can make a commercially viable model. And we all know that cloud, uh, if you are calibrated your need properly, if you have done the homework properly, then it is definitely a cost-effective proposition. Coming to AI and its security, yes, it's a big topic because we always talk about customer data, huge customer data being collected, social profiling, final planning, and this and that and all that. While the use cases are essentially using it for risk profiling, uh, identifying what is the payback capacity of the customer, early warning signals, et cetera. But you have to understand there are, this is a deep data and it provides a very deep insight. So example, if the data is used wrongly, it can create an algorithmic bias, you know, so maybe you will have a set of segments of customers that can be completely left out. You might create socioeconomic equality. So I think there is some work to be done, particularly on the use of data. And I think obviously with data protection law coming up, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that this will get addressed. And from cost perspective of an AI, we all know that there are a humongous amount of platforms. Uh, I think ranging from, you know, minimum to max and based on the organization, it's appetite of payback or the IT investment organization pick can pick and choose and still leverage uh, technologies like AI. Yeah. Thank you, Kishat. Thank you on touching on this. Uh, that's the second eye which always regulators are watching us and on putting a guideline framework. And one more very, very interesting is the data protection law, which is getting tabulated. And once this data protection comes, then uh, the, the data will have a different paradigm shift altogether. Very interesting. Uh, I would like to now take the view from uh, Rishab on how it is being cost effective and how it is safe to use all these emerging technologies. So thank you, Valahi. So uh, cloud deployments uh, are certainly uh, cost friendly. Uh, 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 they uh, to go for on-demand services and uh, utilize those services as our, as our business scale. But they are safe. That totally depends on the uh, way we deploy our applications. 
So for example, in cloud deployment, we are using Amazon Web Services as a cloud provider. So it's always a shared responsibility. The cloud provider provides you a safe ecosystem, but how you deploy, how you architect your applications, the security depends on that. As more and more uh, open APIs are being deployed, so this increases the risk further. And vulnerability in APIs can put your whole financial data on risk. So I think organizations today uh, need to be very careful in their API strategy. And they should leave no store and turn in uh, securing their infrastructure. Even uh, all the day, RBI uh, is very uh, particular about the cloud on infras- uh, cloud se- uh, the infrastructure security part. And regular uh, security audits need to be done by the NDFCs and regular entities, regulated entities uh, on their infrastructure, just to make sure the customer data and financial data would remain safe uh, while organization embark on their API strategy. So right now I see a lot of not many organizations uh, uh, are investing more on the security front. And this again had opened new business models for many companies who also provide security uh, to uh, these organizations on a on-demand basis for their cloud infrastructure. Thank you, Rishab. Thank you on touching, like, uh, it's a shared responsibility uh, between the hosting provider and us and then how we need to protect that infra and AP stacks. Very interesting view. I would like to take the view from Marsha also on this, please. Yeah. I think uh, uh, as uh, some of these guys already called out, um, the part of the responsibility lies with the whoever is implementing this, right? Um, all the cloud frameworks are providing, you know, uh, programming models and facilities where you can build a very cost-friendly architecture, right? And uh, if you are taking uh, use of the right constructs, definitely you can uh, make it uh, very cost effective. Uh, security, again, as uh, Rishav was pointing out, is slightly more challenging. You have to do quite a bit to ensure. One thing which happens uh, in both cases, right? So the mm-hmm. there's a risk concentration which is happening, right? So because you have a lot more data which is getting utilized over here, right, in a single place, right? So th- that increases the risk of data compromise. If the data compromise happens, then, you know, you are now losing the data in bulk, right? As well as the bias, you know, uh, Mr. Momin was talking about, that's also very real, right? So um, so it brings a lot more responsibility uh, to the someone who is utilizing these technologies. And uh, while the regulators are doing their job and they are trying to catch up, I think the regulations are probably far behind than what some of the risks we are getting exposed to. So I would definitely encourage, like, you know, see people like us who are ut- utilizing these uh, uh, technologies, a large amount of responsibility lies in our hands to protect our customers and to ensure that, you know, these technologies become, you know, beneficial instead of becoming, like, you know, um, problematic in future. Very, very interesting, Asha. Like you talked about, uh, like the asset which we have, it is a data, huge amount of data, and how to protect it without the compromise. So, very relevant one because everyone here are here to safeguard the data end of the day. Very relevant one. Uh, I will know because the topic is very interesting on this game changer. I would like to understand from everyone, uh, like how the technology is going to change the face of a BFSA sector in 2021 and beyond. Uh, I would like to move to Mr. Prabhi and take his opinion right now. Thank you. That's a most relevant question and uh, that's the most relevant for all the startups who are in the field of emerging technology. Yes, uh, uh, there is a adoption and there is a slow adoption. I would say that it's not a very increasing, but again, it's slow. Here, uh, uh, I'll talk about my startup. Uh, so we have started and um, on retail banking, we have got a couple of products on blockchain. And yes, one of the bank has started adapting and some of the other bank has started looking into that. Yes, when you talk of the blockchain or any kind of emerging technology, early adoption, people are still on an evaluation stage. People are still on a POC stage. 
I look forward industry to accept beyond POC. Talk in the case of uh, insurance industry, they are uh, health insurance specifically. So the, they are talking of adopting it, but again, there is no real time adoption. Uh, Max Bupa or yeah, some of the other insurance, they have started taking this over. Again, in the similar case in the banking, uh, Axis Bank and a couple of private sector bank have started adopting the uh, uh, blockchain technology, specifically for the banking and uh, BFSI. Talk about the other industry. Yes, there is a there is an adoption. Yes, on the seed and on the, a couple of state governments have started seed traceability on uh, particularly where I belong to Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. They have started adopting um, blockchain as a, a technology. We have started working on a, a very high profile project uh, whereby we are tracing the seed from the nuclear seed to the breeder seed to the foundation seed and the complete value chain of the seed. So. It's a kind of a protecting our own biodiversity using a technology and protecting our uh, genuineness or the uniqueness and protecting those uh, uh, those, those those seed level at a uh, genome level uh, and uh, not, not getting it diluted. So this is that what the research and uh, uh, Indian Council of Agriculture Research is going to look into that. So there is a wider range of adoption, specifically on BFSI, yes, there is a adoption, but again, it's pretty slow, I would say. But somehow, what I would say that any slower adoption is going to make a transformation. So when there is a transformation, yes, there is going to be sustainability on the technology. So that's what I look for in the future. Uh, uh, thank you, Prabhu. Uh, like uh, the early adoptions are picking up in in, in an BFS domain. And a very interesting one which you talked about is you are using the biodiversity for the technology. Very interesting one. Uh, I will move to Mr. Kizar Momi. I want to understand like uh, what are the technology game changes like uh, BFS sector is going to face from 2021 and beyond. Yeah, thank you, Balaji, once again. I think uh, when it comes to uh, technology in particular, uh, I think there are only a few things that we talk about. We talk about paperless, touchless, do it yourself self-help, complete digital. I think uh, because of COVID-19, anyway, the physical moment, uh, there are a lot of restrictions and there was mandated that no physical interaction should happen. So that has actually forced a lot of organization, rather all industry towards adoption of digital. Uh, a lot of people have really started reinventing uh, their processes, business processes are uh, you know, now being completely digitized, a lot of work that is being done from in last 12 to 18 months. And we are hopeful that a lot of success stories will also emerge because digital is a relatively slow process. So I think there, uh, that, that's where we stand now. Coming to FY21 and beyond, particularly in BFI, BFSI, uh, uh, there are a few viewpoints from my side. I think uh, uh, the use of vernacular is going to increase because the technology is going beyond boundaries, right? So we are having huge amount of rural segment under school, you know, sections are there. So we'll have to reach out to them. So vernacular use will definitely increase. The people who are aspirants, they want to connect with the banking and bureau, but does not have the banking in bureau right now. The technology and solutions will come in that direction <clears throat> to help them and stitch those ecosystem into the mainstream. Uh, focus will be likely to be on creating strong fraud controls, detection, prevention, and hassle-free interactions. This is an important area. Because as you increase the ecosystem of digital, there's a humongous amount of frauds that can happen. So I think that one area, I think, will be strengthened by technology. Uh, paper review products, obviously, will slowly disappear uh, more and more. I think interventions from regulator, government, and third parties will come. We already know mobility apps and payment ecosystem is anyway conquered the space. But I think some areas like uh, use of AI analytics, real-time interactions, and smooth processes, uh, human-less, I think, uh, interactions will take precedence. And I think in uh, coming year or so, I think we're going to see uh, the industry change a lot. Maybe something that has happened, hasn't happened in last three, four years might happen in next like 12 to 18 months. That's what we are anticipating. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, Kishar. Like, uh, I take a note of certain points like uh, self-help is this Many of them are exploring vernacular, very relevant. I've seen most of the beef sector are moving in the direction, very relevant one. 
now i'll move to mr rishabh kar uh, to take his view while well, we monitor moving so as i mentioned this pandemic era provided much needed push to technology adoption by the bfi sector uh, cloud uh, adoption usage of uh, ai and rpa uh, would take center stage at, as per my uh, understanding and robotic process automation removes the requirement of repeated human tasks and improve overall efficiencies open banking or api banking would be more favorable time so uh, as per the initiatives like account aggregator and token network the businesses would be more uh, inclusive so they would reach out to more uh, uh, underserved segments of the country because of these things so i think certainly uh, the segment which would be benefited most by this technology adoption would be the underserved segment of the country which had now never been reached by the financial industry banking and financial industry and this would all happen due to the uh, adoption of the digital technologies and more 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 and more availability of the data sources on these segments uh thank you i can take the final move from marsha you are in mute please Archa, you are unmute. Can can you unmute and please proceed? Hello, Archa. Unmute, please. Ah, uh, you need to unmute and talk, please. Sing you, yeah. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, quickly can wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. So what I was saying is that um, open API is the another thing which will um, um, help the innovation a lot. What we are saying is that there are a lot of um, smaller startups and uh, technology companies which are coming with unique solutions which can um, sort of help bigger BSSI players, right? to bring in the innovation and um, more and more we move towards the open api and uh, uh, standardization some of those inputs will be seamlessly able to integrate into the overall ecosystem and help um, bigger players to adopt the new technology so uh, one thing uh, which we are saying is that um, larger players uh, definitely trying to utilize the new technology but their speed sometimes uh, is slower uh, but when they are able to take help from various you know startups saas players and all the overall ecosystem is benefiting from the innovation that that's how i see the some of the trend in uh, 2021 apart from the this trio of abc you know artificial intelligence blockchain and cloud yeah uh, thank you arshin in the interest of time let's close the chat like uh, we had a very wonderful panel discussion i need to thank everyone and the final takeaway from everyone is like uh, if i summarize don't wait for all the signal to turn green just start the journey in the technology emerging technology that's what the conclusion is all about right now over to you I'd like to thank all the panelists uh, for a very insightful panel discussion on artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud, and more. A reality check. Uh, thank you, Mr. Balaji uh, T K, for moderating the session. Uh, Mr. Balaji T K is the Chief Information Officer, Orange Retail Finance Limited. Uh, we would like to provide you with a small token of our appreciation, uh, Mr. Balaji, uh, on behalf of Elis Techno Media. thank you mr balaji uh, now we would like to provide a small token of our appreciation to mr prabir mishra chief executive officer trust one thank you mr prabir we would now like to uh, give a small token of our appreciation to mr khizar momin chief technology 
Chief Technology Officer, Indian School Finance Company. Thank you, Mr. Momin. Uh, Mr. Rishabh Garg, Chief Technology Officer, Ugro Capital. Thank you, Mr. Rishabh. And Mr. Harshwardhan Mittal, Chief Technology Officer, Cred Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Mittal. I'd once again like to thank all the panelists for a very insightful panel discussion. Hope to see you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.